for that leadership in the Democratic Party. With the same spirit, we will request the state of Delaware representative to carry on the torch down to the state level and pass legislation condemning hatred in this state, first state as well, please. With all this, I stand to be corrected what I heard, what I was told. Recently, an event took place in this state where the Democratic Party was present from the former vice president all the way to local council person. But in that entire program, Muslim invitation was lacking. Also, this entire program, again, I remain to be corrected, but entire program, there was no condemnation of this heinous crime that took place. So I want to bring that up to all my future coming public speakers. If this is correct, then please address that issue. Why? When it comes to policy making meetings of the Democratic Party, where the vice president, former vice president was present, to the all the way chain of command to local councilmen, yet entire day of the ceremony, not a single speaker talked about the issue. But when it comes to policy making, the issue is not addressed. When it comes to public, again, we admire and appreciate that you are standing with us, but why this not happening? So with that caveat, with that question, I'll request my first speaker. Again, these speakers don't need introductions. These are your elected representatives. If you don't know them, then perhaps this is the time to get to know them. So first speaker that I request is County Executive Matt Meyer. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hand together for Matt Meyer, please. Good evening. Uh, it's phenomenal to stand up here and see the diversity among us. What we're seeing in Christchurch, what we saw in Pittsburgh, what we saw in Charleston, what we see in too many places around this country and around this world has absolutely no place in Newcastle County. I was once a diplomat, a U.S. diplomat, serving our country in Mosul, Iraq. It was, Mosul is among the most diverse cities of the world in terms of religious uh, background. Years ago, it had a vibrant Jewish population, a vibrant Chaldean Christian population, a vibrant Shia and Sunni Muslim population. I once visited, nine years ago, a Chaldean high priest there at his church. And he said to me something I will never forget. He said what he tells members of his church is that on Fridays, the Muslims go to worship. And there are people in this world who want to do awful, horrendous things to Muslims. And he said we as Christians The Jews go to worship. And as Chaldean Christians, and on Sunday, we go to worship. And if we don't speak up before then, that's not going to It means the world to me that when anything awful is happening in this world, we all come together. It's amazing that the first speaker tonight was a Christian leader among us and the second was a rabbi among us. Does anyone here know who Dawood Nabi is? Dawood David Nabi? On Friday, Dawood Nabi went to pray in Christ Church. In the 1970s, Daoud fled Afghanistan as a refugee. He came to New Zealand simply to find freedom and work as an engineer. He was famous in Christ Church for speeding his way to the airport whenever refugees were on their way to Christ Church. He would say he didn't just want to welcome the refugees, he wanted to be the first
according to this awful video that was circulating, when the gun was pulled, the 71-year-old, the grandfather, Raul Navi, who simply went... lose their life. It's amazing the acts of heroism that, that come out when human beings are at their worst. We come together and show our true colors, show who we really are and who we really can be. And it's amazing tonight that so many of us are coming together. within all of us. Thank you. Again, thank you, Matt Meyer, for kind word and practically putting them into practice by standing with us, praying with us, participating in last Friday prayer here. It's, you know, this is, a, again, we greatly appreciate, admire, and acknowledge your leadership. Thank you very much. For my next speaker, I'll request the students from this institution the student Hadar al Hajar, sixth grade student, please come up and introduce my next speaker. Thank you. to this unthinkable tragedy with such grace. It is a struggle to find words for this kind of terrible violence and for the pain it has caused to so many. My heart is broken for the victims of this attack, for the Muslim community, for New Zealand, and for the world. My heart is also broken because this story has become all too familiar. In Christ Church, in Charleston, in Pittsburgh, in Wisconsin, in Quebec, and in so many other places, victims of all faiths were killed by the same horrible disease. It is the same disease that threatened to destroy the United States in the 19th century, threatened to destroy the world in the 20th century. White supremacy was our greatest sin, and its decline has been our greatest triumph. As we now stand in the 21st century, we are faced with reminders of the evil that could kill 50 innocents including a three-year-old boy. The more we learn about the terrorist attack in Christ Church, the more disturbed we are by who and what inspired the shooter. It is a clear reminder that hate does not grow in a vacuum. It is fed or starved by all of us. History will judge us for our success or failure in learning from the past. 
And so it becomes the duty of good people to recognize that hate's home is as much in the evil as it is in the complicit. Hate lives as much in racism as it does in the safe harbor of those who fail to condemn it. It lives as much in the actions of maniacs as it does in the words of demagogues. It lives as much in the open mouths of bigots as it does in the silence of good people. We must never accept it as normal. I know that many of Delaware's Muslims are living in fear, just as any of us would. This is a frightening time, not only because of the tragedies in the news, but because the sting of hate does not feel like it is on the other side of the world. Know that I and everyone in this room is your friend and your ally. We are here today because we choose solidarity, not silence. no space between us. We are our brother's keeper this day and every day forward. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Kathy Jennings. I will request again student from this academy, from Tarbiya Academy, Sixth grade student Fatma Bakir to come up and introduce our next speaker. Fatma Bakir, please. Good evening. My name is Fatma Bakir and I'm a sixth grader at Tarbia School. Oh. Bethany Holong was born and raised on a family farm in, um, in Sussex County with her two older brothers. Bethany Holong graduated from Indiana River High School and went on to pursue her childhood dream of becoming a nurse at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. She moved with her husband, Dana, to Charleston, South Carolina, where she then pursued her MSN in Community Health Nursing from the Medical University of South Carolina. She worked at UD for 20 years as a, as a nursing professor. You may not know, she ran her campaign right here from the daycare part of our our events such as the such as the science fair and iftar dinners. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Bethany Holland. Oh, you were there too, right? Um, it is great to be here, but not on these occasions. It's great to be back with the children that I watched grow for the past few years. With you, we don't like to be here on these days and these moments when we remember the children and the adults lost in New Zealand. I think each of the speakers who spoke before me, whether as a faith community or here in the community um, leadership, really hit it on the nail on the head when we talk about uh, being silent. Uh, came to mind as I was sitting here, Martin Luther King's words, uh, we begin to end our lives the day we remain silent. And so I think it's so important that we come together and we work together. You shared the secret that we have to work and be not be afraid. Uh, my son's first language was Farsi. Uh, my husband was military. Uh, we were had a provider from Afghanistan. And uh, we learned that the best things in life come from diversity. And I think you know from our state elected officials. Community as well. And that the more diverse we are, the stronger. And so we have heard some great words today and strong words denouncing the hate and what occurred in New Zealand. 
So I want to take the turn to address the children at the moment because I feel that they are the ones to our future, to my son and others, we can change. And I want the action to start today, not only with our children and adults, but those steps forward that we can begin to break down those barriers and not be afraid. shows that we are one person. As a nurse, we all bleed red. And it is a common denominator that we are human and we are human beings and that we are kind. And that we see in each of us perspectives of future. These children, um, if they will stand in a bit, you'll see that they were some of the top students yesterday in Delaware Science Olympiad. They're gold medals around their neck. And what that tells us, they are our doctors, they're our nurses, they're the individuals taking care of us every day. So we are one person and we are one community. And so um, on my behalf of the comments I had to say, building on the others who've been able to denounce us, let's look to how we unify. And so building upon those diversity and how we in our state can continue to protect you. Thanks to our law enforcement. Thank you to the leaders among many faiths and communities. And so with that, I will end and just again turn to all of us and our children to say, you know, let's start today to see those changes. Nelson Mandela, I think, said it best. No child is born with hate. No child is born to see the differences in religion. We are taught. We are taught the hate. We are taught those differences. And certainly for those who have mental illness, we want to make sure they get the treatment that they need because we recognize sometimes violence is a discursor out of mental illness. So with that, thank you. And thank you, Padma. You're going to be taller than me next year. <laughs> Hopefully we meet under positive terms only. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, next speaker just walked in, so I will request a student from this academy. I was just told the academy's name is Isa bin Maryam Tarbiya School, which means Son of Christ. So Christ Church and this is Son, and there's a relationship. Isa bin Maryam, the son of Maryam, son of Mary, in the Christ Church. There's another coincidence that we have a lot more in common if we think deep and try to understand from each other's rich tradition. And we have verse in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 1, that God has created you from a single soul. So our soul, our forefather, our the father, Adam is the one. All of us are in different denominations, different interpretation. We can and we should have a sibling rivalry that's at the best. So at the end of the day, our father is one. Chapter four, verse one states that clearly. So our Maria Baker, please. Good evening and assalamu alaikum. My name is Maryam Bakker and I'm an eighth grader at Tarbiya School. Raising a woman to Musa Bar Rochester. A congressional office. The um, cabinet. In health, of health and social services. Secretary of Labor and State Personal Director. She also. She also serves as the CEO of the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League. So this is what you and I already know. What you may not know is the bond that Lisa and I share. Lisa has been a frequent attendee of my graduation ceremony, science fair, and other activities in my school. Last year, she invited me to a National Congressional Prayer Breakfast. I thought she might have invited a lot of people there, but when I leave, there From Delaware along with her family. It was a humbling experience that I will always remember. Lisa is one of the most optimistic, enthusiastic, and pleasant in the history of the Fourth State. Lisa, you may have Lisa, you may have already heard this before, but I'm going to say it anyway. Dear to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama of Delaware, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome Congresswoman Lisa Delaware.
and that was so beautiful. <sighs> Forgive my tears. And I, I am an optimistic person. I feel so humbled by what you shared. I feel so humbled to be here with all of you. You are family. We are family. <laughs> I see my brothers and sisters that I serve with. I see Rabbi Sachs. Yesterday I was with Rabbi Beals and Rabbi Sachs. Maria, I, we are family. We are a community. And um, I said to the governor, I, what do you say on such an occasion? Again, and the past few weeks, uh, I stood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge with Congressman John Lewis, who was on the front lines during the struggle and pain and power that was on that bridge that allowed me to stand here as a congresswoman. And I could, I could also feel the hope. I could also feel the strength. And I could also hear Dr. King's words that darkness cannot drive out darkness. cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We are here to love. I celebrate with you. I have hope with you. And I will leave you with a picture in the Washington Post is an article, and there's a little boy, three years old. He was one of the victims. Muadi, Somali family, born in New Zealand. I want us to remember To love his aspirations. We have to do our part. We have to spread the light and the love so that his death and everyone else's is not in vain. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you very much, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, again, it's a very humbling experience. And we have this nation case, nation of immigrants, only different. My parents might have came here 20 years ago, yours probably 50 years ago. And if we dig deep, in essence, this is a nation of immigrants. That is the beauty. We have flowers and bouquet of flowers, different colors, different background, and that makes this perfect union in the entire world, in perfect country. That's why many immigrants are choosing this. As a matter of fact, some of them are dying and cannot even make it to it. So this is the best blessing from God Almighty that we are here to stand together for the pleasure of pain and solidarity of each other. Um, Hand that you uh, reflected through your tears was standing with solidarity. As a matter of fact, from this community, one of the victims was in laws, and the in laws are sitting here in the community and audience. I don't want to mention their name. The student was doing PhD in there, and he was a victim out of those 50 people. So, this is not a matter of merely standing with each other. This is also sharing pain at first hand. So there are people in audience, those who suffer, their family members uh, died in this incident. I request 
Sarah Bakuk, again, student from this academy, and I've been hearing all these metals been, you know, making noise in the background, and I congratulate you guys, you did a great job, and this is an achievement. Please put your hands together for these students, for the teachers, for the organizers. So Sarah Bakuk will introduce my next speaker. Sarah Bakuk, thanks. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. I hope you're all having a good day. My name is Sarah Barkuk. I am a seventh grader in Tarbiya School and I will be introducing our U.S. Senator, Chris Coons. We're honored to have him with us today. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Shalom and peace to all in the shadow of this and so wrong. To scare all of us, this nation was founded on the concept of religious liberty and freedom, the ability to worship God as we experience